Okay, so the next thing I want to just talk about briefly today is something that we've mentioned in passing, but we have not spent a lot of time on, and that's doubly linked lists. So for our linked list, our singly linked list of the kind that you guys have written, the problem that we always run into, the tricky part about singly linked lists, is that even with a tail pointer, here's our tail pointer, even with a tail pointer, if we try and do remove last, it is always big O of n because we don't have a way to go from the last element to the thing before it. Okay. We always have to start at the beginning and iterate through the list until we get to the element before the last one, so we can do remove. So a solution to that is to use a doubly linked list. And a doubly linked list is just like a singly linked list. And in our single list, in our node class, we have the data object and the next object. And in our doubly linked list, we have next, we have previous, and we have data. So our head element po points to our first node, and subsequent nodes also have next, previous, and data. Okay. Just going to draw three nodes. So in each case, next points to the next thing in the list, and previous points to the previous element. Okay. And we can have a tail pointer, and a tail pointer, of course, is required for constant time um, adding and removing from the list. So if we have a doubly linked list and we want to do a remove last method, we can now basically um, find our tail pointer. If we want to remember the element, we can look for, um, sorry, let's store that as temp. We can store the data in our last node. And then the reason in a singly linked list is that, that it's big O of n is that we have to start at the beginning to get to the node before the last one. If we have a doubly linked list, the node before the last one is going to be tail dot previous. Okay, tail.previous, that's the node before the last one. So, in fact, to delete the last element, delete the last node, all we have to do, we don't need to necessarily get a special variable for it, we can just set tail.previous.next equal to null. That deletes this connection. We've still got our tail pointer, and that's pointing to C. So we might say tail is equal to tail dot previous. Okay. So that moves our tail pointer from pointing to C deletes that, and it makes it point to the node before C. Okay. Once we've done that, is there anything left pointing at C, at the last node in our list? We've got a link from the last node to 
the node before it. But that connection is going from the last node to the node before it. That's not saying, in memory, here is the position of the last node. Okay? It's saying, in memory, here is the position of the node before the last one. There's nothing left that points to this node. Just like in our linked list, in our regular singly linked list, we saw the situation where we have our head pointer. If we break this link, let's say we break this link between A and B. Now there's nothing pointing at B. That gets garbage collected. Now there's nothing pointing at C that gets garbage collected. Okay. So in this situation, there's nothing pointing at the last node. The last node points to the one before it, but nothing points at the last node. Okay. So once we move our tail pointer to point to previous, this gets garbage collected. This temporary variable is just the data. We need that because we're going to return it. This gets garbage collected. We return temp. Maybe adjust our current size. Maybe check and see if this is empty, if tail is equal to null, etc., and so on. But that's basically all we need. And this is a constant time remove from the end of a linked list. Okay. So that's the advantage. The advantage is having a doubly linked list is you get constant time removed because you just find the end, the tail pointer, and you find the node before the tail pointer. Let me resurrect my linked list. So next and previous and C and tail. So the advantage is that the disadvantage is that, for example, if I do an add first, now what I have to do is I have to create my new node. Here's my new node. I have to make my new node.next point to the current head. I have to make head.previous point to my new node. And then I have to update the head pointer. Okay, That's how I do an add first. So I have an extra step of pointers that I have to remember to update. If I want to insert something in the middle, I make my new node. I've got my next and my previous and my data. Now what I've got to do is I've got to update I've got to update the next, the current dot previous to point to my new node. I've got to update new node dot next to point to my next node. I've got to update new node dot previous to point to the one before it. And I've got to make previous dot new node match my new node. Okay. So it becomes a lot more complex to do adding, for example, in the middle of the list or adding at the beginning, or adding at the end of the list. So those operations are just much more complex. And the only benefit is that you get constant time removal of the tail of the list. So the reason that I didn't want you to do a doubly linked list for the assignment is because I was trying to spare you the pain of moving all of these next and previous pointers in your add and remove methods. Okay? It's because I'm a nice guy. Really. Yeah. So if you move, if you move over and you insert one, uh, does that automatically move the next one over, or is it could be exposed to that? Um, so if you're doing an insertion and add first, yeah. or okay. So the question was, when you do an add first, does that automatically move everything over? Well, it does automatically. I mean, not automatically. You still have to. Um, move all the pointers, it does move everything over, but you have to remember to move your previous pointer from head.previous and set your next pointer. 
But everything else is contained, right? Because this first node, the thing that points to it is already there, and you don't have to worry about changing that. What you just have to worry about is the two nodes that you're adding. Just like when you add in the middle, you don't have to worry about nodes down here. If we had some more nodes down here, this node lost its data along the way. If I have more nodes down here, just like in our singly linked list, I'm just going to abbreviate next, previous, and data. And previous goes to previous. And next goes to next, D, E, and F. And next here goes to null. And presumably previous here goes to null. So now when I add something in the middle of my list, just like in our singly linked list, when we add something, for example, when we do an add first, the only thing we have to check is do we update our tail pointer? Presumably here we'll have a tail too. In our singly linked list, when we add something at the beginning, we just have to check if we have a single element list, did we update our tail pointer? We don't have to worry about any of the other nodes. Once we've got two or three nodes, we can add first, add first, add first, add first, without doing any other checks. And the same thing happens here. We only have to worry about the node that we're adding and the nodes on either side. And if those are null, then we have to worry about that. The same five rules apply. Empty list, single element list, working at the beginning, working at the end, working in the middle. The same five things. You have to check those things. Just because you've got a doubly linked list doesn't get you out from checking those things. Okay. So it's the same problems.